Today I'm really excited to make this video because, I don't know, I enjoy talking to the camera and I enjoy getting feedback and doing these videos, like, I go back in time and remember how I was thinking or how I did certain things and how I changed. This video is supposed to go about my book. It's not necessarily about the book itself, but it's more about the cover. The book cover. Let me show you. Ta-da! This is the book cover. It was important to me to be able to open the book like this. And I um, decided to get like an open back. There's a lot of pressure choosing a cover for a book because basically this cover is meant to give like a hint what the book is about, right? And this cover also needs to generate attention so people will pick the book and like want to see what's inside. It has to raise curiosity about the inside, the content. The reason why I chose this cover is um, because of a cow. It's simply because of a cow. <laughs> For that story, I think I need to go a bit back. So I'm from a small village. Before I applied um, at this school, Oskarschule für Fotografie in Berlin, everyone needed to do like a portfolio in order to apply. I did portraits and I also did like a small series of a dairy farm in my village. So the series consisted mainly of pictures of cows. The way I got into the school, I believe, was because of the cows. <laughs> this is this must not be true, but this is what I believe. After the second year, you're supposed to do like a presentation in front of the whole school and talk about your projects and just present yourself. I somehow, I don't know how I ended up always showing cows but somehow I was I think continuing what I did in my application like I continued photographing at this farm so I showed again cows <laughs> the way I started my presentation was the statement that I love cows people that know me at this school know me because of that sentence because apparently it's not a usual thing they hear so apparently it's so far from, I don't know, cows are lovely souls. Like, I don't even know like why you wouldn't like them or love them. And, but apparently it was an unusual statement, so everyone remembered. It didn't matter that after that I didn't really take any more pictures of cows. My photography was related to cows somehow from that point on. It's fine, <laughs> like they can forget about my other photography, but yeah, at least there was some, I think, I guess a good reason to stand out. This book was my final product of my studies there. I wanted to somehow conclude this cow story and include a picture of a cow. Since I couldn't include anything inside the book with a cow on it, it had to be the cover. And what's special about this cow? It's not just a cow. It's not just some basic random cow. It's a jersey cow. I love jerseys. They're so pretty. I like their fur and it's like this golden brown and they have like these eyes and they look so kind. So it's a jersey cow. It's my favorite cow. So it's a special cow. <laughs> That's why it made it on the cover. That leads me to another thing. If you have watched my other videos, you know that I shot everything in large format with this big camera. So it's usually you know if it's like large format when it has this 
four to five inch format. Here you can see it as well, like this. This does not have the format. If I start a project, I decide on a specific kind of camera I want to use for this project. I don't really want to mix formats, cameras. This idea comes from me studying at this particular school. I think that's, yeah, because there I was taught to keep it always like black and white or color, not black and white and color. That's not gonna work. Large format or medium format or small format. If it's like different cameras, like cut it to the same format, but we don't like to cut the format. <laughs> We want to keep the original format. This is very um, specific, <laughs> but it's inside me now. The cover is the only picture that I didn't take with my large format camera, but with one of my small format cameras, which I took along with me. Usually I photograph with this beauty, the Nikon. It's a little, well, there are some missing pieces, but it's still working. This one is my go-to camera. But I also had with me this camera. This is the camera from my grandfather. He also really liked to take pictures. The light meter is broken, but since I had this camera, I always like looked through this to get the exposure. And then I knew like what settings I would need for this one. I put on here a different lens, like a 35 millimeters. It had like a 50 millimeters, but I wanted to, since this one also already like had a 50 millimeter lens, I wanted to put like a different one. And a friend gave me lenses for this camera and one of it was the 35 millimeter lens. The difference between like a 50 millimeters and 35 millimeter lens is that 50 millimeters would be this, like what I see, and then 35 millimeters would be a bit wider, but not too wide, but a bit wider. So a very unusual thing for me because I usually do not take pictures with 35 millimeters. So this made this. I believe in the spirits of things, if that makes sense. I really like the idea that I somehow used my grandfather's camera to take this picture and I saw this cow, which is my favorite cow, and that kind of brings me back to my own roots. And since this whole project is about what is home, what what do we need for home, what is my personal home, like I kind of like the idea to have all these references of a place I grew up in in that picture or all the things I connected to the way I grew up and which I back then called my home. That's why I chose this picture. This is your, your pretty camera too. So having said that, this is kind of the little story story behind this one. The fun fact about this picture is that it's actually a mirrored version of the image. It was the other way around. But since I wanted this cow to be on the front and not the back, I had to mirror it. And you can see this little baby cow here. I want to get into the story of the picture itself. <laughs> of the environment and as you can see like there's a soccer goal and these chairs so it's obviously not just a random field but rather a garden of the woman I met and the woman I met this is her and her name is Anne-Claire. I really liked spending time there. First of all <laughs> I remember it was kind of like um, difficult to get to her house and I was uh, getting lost several times because it was kind of hilly and I don't know the streets were so confusing But eventually I made it. I didn't feel like a stranger when I was there on this day. It was suddenly hot <laughs> So yeah, we sat down she started talking and talking about her home and talking about all the influences in life which made herself become her. <laughs> One particular thing which I still remember and which I still keep in mind is she said something about climate change and connected that to the issue of treating men and women not equal and that I find interesting so she put out this thesis of once we treat men and women on an equal level we will be able to solve <laughs> 
the climate change. It opened my eyes to realize that thinking of other problems and how they might be affected by multiple things which I didn't consider to have an effect on the global issue. So I had some time wandering around her garden which was yeah this cow in the middle of like in front of the house with um, her baby and some chickens there was also a vegetable farm where her partner was working and there was also this tiny river and with the ducks and it was just very peaceful and i'm a very careful person but i felt like it was okay for me to wander around to see things i myself became very calm at that moment cows are very curious animals and if you do like a sudden movement they are like they are scared or they are very cautious as well so you need to be calm and take your time and movement and not to um, scare them away. I really enjoy just sitting in the grass and watching the cow and her baby and her calf. It's not a baby, it's a calf. So it was really nice and I felt really zen. She invited me to join them for lunch. So we ate together. I'm always amazed how friendly people are and how welcoming <laughs> and how normal it felt to sit on this table with her three children, with a partner, and to just enjoy a meal together. After eating, we then took the picture because then also the sun was a bit more down. If the universe wants it, we will meet again. I haven't been back to France since the project and it's already like two years, but eventually I will get back there and show all the things I've done with the pictures and all that. Uh, that's it. That's a small little talk about my cover. If you're interested in buying this beautiful book, then let me know. Remember, my exhibition is on January 7th at 4 p.m. Yay! As always, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you for looking at my face. We'll see each other in two to three weeks. Bye.